Hey Lou, um, for the Conjugal Club, we'd like you to break down some of your old school uh, training tapes that are com- converted into DVDs and we'd like to start off with uh, the Bench Secrets and we'll start off with a speed workout. So we're going to play it and then if you can just answer some questions and provide some insight along the way, that'd be huge. Certainly. So Lou, in, in this video... Uh, where, is this the gym in Demarest? Yes, it is. 800 square feet. Oh, wow. Strongest uh, 800 square feet in the world. <laughs> who Can you tell me who is in this video? Uh, this is Kenny Patterson benching right here. Uh, Kenny had a 640-pound raw bench. Said many world records in gear. And uh, who are the spotters? Uh, the man on the left is Jerry Swankert. Uh, Jerry was a nice caliber bodybuilder, and, but trained with us a lot in the upper body. Uh, he had a raw bench of about 530, 198. Damn. And I believe George Hobbard's in this tape. And George um, broke several, eight world records in a row. Here's George, eight world records in a row. And he, uh, George also has a 625 raw bench at that time, weighing 230. And uh, Rob Fuser's in this tape. Yeah. And uh, Rob had a 585 right around 600 sometimes. And uh, <clears throat> Rob at one time was world record on the 308s in the bench. So you're looking at quite a crew here. I, I noticed three, three world records out of the poor guys. When George speed benches, he doesn't seem to touch his chest. More of a contrast kind of method. Well, it's a yeah, ballistic benching. Ballistic bench. Yeah, I've always benched like that myself. I benched like that. Never touch the chest. Reversal. Don't do it with extremely heavy weights. What's the biggest benefit of a ballistic bench? Uh, st- stronger stretch reflex. Okay. It's much like jumping off boxes of plyometrics. But uh, it's more power metric than plyometric. Uh, this seems to have come in before bands were ever around for speed work. Yes. Uh, have, have that, how did that change, or have bands made a huge difference since then? Yes, uh, George and Kenny used a lot of heavy bands, and it really pushed their, their benches up. George is extremely strong. Um, you know, I made 315 for 23 reps. So Kenny made 26 and beat me. Kenny wasn't very good at reps, but George laid down and did 40. Wow. 40 reps is 315, yes. How did uh, George and Kenny end up coming to the gym? How did they get here? Kenny Patterson's father died when he was 14 years old, and he, was play, he wanted to get big, play football. So I, I brought him in the gym. I started training Kenny at 14 as, as right along with the most top people. So by percents, a percent of 100 pounds is like a percent of 1,000 pounds. So Kenny jumped right in, did the percents. He could bench 135 in the beginning at 14, over 600 at 20. Wow. Raw. Did you know I, off I, the bat I, that he had that potential? It, well, his physique. If you notice in his tape, just check out those arms. They were pistons, 23 and a half inches at the biggest when he was 275. And George, uh, we watched George at two bench meets here in town, bench 475 two years in a row. I said, George, why don't you come down? George, and he wouldn't come down for two years. I finally said, George, why, why, why can't you come down? He, he said that he heard that we were crazy, so he was afraid to come down. But he came down in one year, bench 628. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. It, uh, it seems in this video that everybody in here has a purpose, whether from loading or motivation or giving small cueing tips. So how important were training partners and our training partners? The most important thing a man can have is a power rack. The second most important thing is a good training partner. Uh, they motivate two heads are better than one. Mm-hmm. And uh, I never had one for six years. And then I got six within six months. And I didn't know what I was missing. You know, someone was very intelligent. Most of them were, we would become PhDs. You know, you'd be a PhD in something, but even in lifting, they were very highly intelligent. It picked up quick. I don't know if we get to see Joe McCoy in these tapes, but Joe was 19 years old, and I would let Joe tell anyone anything because he had it down. He started at 14 years old. Yeah. Uh, he was one of the best coaches I've ever seen. You know, like if I said, Joe, I don't feel right, what am I doing? Tell me. Done. Yeah. Done deal. Uh, it seems that... that sorry, go ahead. I've always trained people then, <laughs> I try to now, but I trained them to be a lifter and a coach. So learn that if you don't know what you're doing, you know what happens if I'm not around. So they, they figured it out and they did real well and they're always doing experiments. What, uh, what happened if a new lifter came in during this? Whose crew would you put him in or to just put him in and see what happened? He would be put in with the comparison of his strengths. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, try to. Yeah. And in Demarest, did uh, you have people, certain people have certain racks? Did you have to earn your way up the way? Or uh, Yes, we had a, you had to bench 500 raw to go to Tim Van Horn's garage. We had three benches there. 
and there was like four, like four or five guys on one bench, and you added up the, 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 the total amount they could bench, and that was the strongest bench in the second and the third. Yeah. And it's funny because I walked in one day, I was on the second bench, and I walked up to Vogelpohl and I said, motherfucker, I challenge you right now to take that top bench. And Chuck said to me, he said, oh, catch me when I'm out of shape. I said, Chuck, you're always out of shape. Well, Chuck benched 390 that day, and I did right around 500. And, but we did it again in three months, and Chuck benched 490. Never again was he Never again. Never go out at night without a gun. 